thank you we bless you we worship you and we magnify your name we thank you for yet another opportunity giving us tonight to hear from you father many people woke up in the morning but they, right now they are no more father it's a privilege giving us oh god father we say thank you we bless you we worship you we magnify you father we ask oh god that you send your holy spirit to lead us tonight, to teach us, O God, your word, because it's the custodian of your word. Father, I ask, O God, behold, a little boy, I know nothing but you. Speak to me and speak through me tonight. Teach me and teach your children through me tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Father, mm -hmm. my power, the power in the name of Jesus Christ, I spell every contrary spirit, every power connected right now in the name of God. I expel them by the fire of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father, because I know you are here. And your glory is radiating. Your power is moving. Your spirit is moving. And the blessing is pouring down upon us. And I know the spirit of slipping and slumbering is gone forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, tonight we have a message. Did you know we are in Bible study? Please, you should be ready to read the Bible tonight as I call your name. We'll be doing it together tonight. And the Lord will bless every of us together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The message tonight, the title is um, Walking directly opposite the word. Walking directly opposite the word. When I mean the word, not the word of God, the word that we are living, the word of sin. Walking directly opposite the word that we are living. The Lord has called us to walk opposite the word that we are living. You cannot be worldly and be godly at the same time. If you are godly, you must be godly. And when you are worldly, you are worldly. So the Lord is saying we must walk in a parallel line. Two parallel lines can never meet. They walk like this, they are two upward lines. They are going and they can never meet. And this is the life the Lord is expecting of us. We, the children of God, we must be in parallel with the world. You can never join together. You and the world can never be interwoven. When the world is going this way, you should be going this way. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible told us in Psalm chapter 1, the first book of Psalm, and the first verse in that book, blessed is the man that walketh not. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. As I've said before, you cannot be ungodly and be godly. You cannot be godly and be worldly. The blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. No standeth in the way of sinners. No seated in the seat of the of 
discomfort. It is clear. If you want to be blessed, if you want to really be a child of God, this instruction must be followed. For you to inherit the kingdom of God, to, for you to be blessed by God, you must follow the instruction, the lay down principle. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. You must follow the lay down principle. Excuse me, those that just went off. Amen. 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 So we must follow the lay down principle. What are the principles? You must avoid the cancer of the ungodly. You must not stand in the way of the sinner. You must not sit with them. You must walk in the opposite direction with the world. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Ego, you go to First John chapter 2, 13 to 13 to 14, um, Sister Gloria, Sister Gloria Okagwari, we go from, that's the first John chapter 2, 15 to 17. I want everyone of us to, to work tonight. There's no room to sleep in tonight. So please, I will call you when you least expected. Those ones now, they, they just heard their name. I will be calling you when you are not expecting it so that we all we be engaged tonight. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Stego, please read 4 John chapter 2, uh, 13 and 15. 13 to 14. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I read, um, I write unto you, Father, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked world. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. Verse 14, I have written unto you, Father, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abided in you, and ye have overcome the wicked world. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. This is a letter from our brother, Rajon. To everyone, he spelled it out to everyone that is living. He wrote to the elders, he wrote to the men, he wrote to the women, to the children, because they are not ignorant of the word of God. Say, because, 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 and tonight the Lord is still speaking to us. Not that you don't know what I'm talking about, you know everything I'm talking about. Is here to strengthen you and I to remind you of what the, of what you know before that we must now go in accordance to the word of God. I write unto you, fathers, because you know, because you know. So I'm telling you tonight because I know you already know. And for you to make heaven, you must be holy. And for you to be holy, you must avoid the things of the world. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. So whatever we be saying tonight is not going to be abracadabra. It's what you and I already know. Praise Master Jesus. That's what he said. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. You have known him. You know God exists, and you and I know that God is holy. And for you and I to live without God in heaven on that day, we must be holy. So whatever I'm saying tonight should not be straight to you. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. So what is that thing that is telling them now? Let's go to verse 15 to 17. 15 to 17. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um. I read first John chapter 2, 15 to 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. He said, because I know you know all the things, that's why I wrote it to you again. So what are those things you avoid? They love not the world. The same letter the Lord is writing to you and I tonight. 
telling you what I told them those days, what I told the children of those days, I told the elders of those days, I told the women of those days, I'm telling you now also, say, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And if it's not forcing you, you may choose to love the world, but if, if it's a conditional statement, if anyone love the world, See, the love of the Father is not in him. So what do we do? For the love of the Father to dwell in us, for us to get ourselves prepared to enter our Father's kingdom on that day, we must avoid loving the things of the world. We must avoid living and walking with them. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Sixteen to 17. Man. 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is of the is of the father. Lust of the lust, but it's not it's not of the father. It's not of the father. Sorry, but it's of the world. Seventeen and the world passed away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Eighteen. No, 17 to 17. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, trying to make your, your flesh happy, trying to satisfy whatever your flesh is looking for. You want to sleep with every woman. You want to make sure everything that the world brings, you get them. You want to enter, you want to, you are enticed by the fantasy of the world. In every disco party, you are there. In every, wherever they are doing things, you are there. Say no. With that, you cannot be a child of God. Say the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes. We all know when Christ was on earth, when in Matthew chapter 4, if you read from verse 4 down, when Satan came to tempt him, these are the things he tempted him with. The, 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 the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. Say, Turn the bread to the stone. Because he wants the flesh to enjoy. Praise Master Jesus. Say, and again, say, and the lust of the eyes. He showed him, show him everything in the world. Say, look at if you bow down for me, I will give you all the sins. The lust of the eyes. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. And the pride of life. He said, jump down. And if you jump down, the angel he said, if you have given the child a charge over you. Pride. I know I can jump down. So that as Satan can come and also tempt you. Go and do this thing. Uh, because God has given you power. Whoever that comes, you lay hand, you pray anyhow. Pride. You want to gain the you want to gain the praise of the people. And Jesus Christ said, No, I am not of the world. I have nothing to do with the pride of this world. I have nothing to do with it. all these things are nothing. I'm not here to gain the things of the world. The same thing is applicable to you and I. Jesus Christ was tempted with the things of this world, with the, with the loss of the flesh, he overcame. The loss of the eyes, he overcame. And the pride of life, he overcame. You and I must also overcome. And how can we overcome? By walking directly opposite the world. Jesus Christ was in the world, but he never interwoven himself with the things of this world. That's why he was able to overcome. And you and I must also overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah. I you go to John chapter 15, 16 to 21. John 15, 16 to 21. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. We must do everything to live for him who got us and choose us for his glory. We must do everything for we to be able to live opposite of the world. We must strive and try to make sure we are living for him that called us. He chose us, us out of the world. 
out of billions of people in the world. He separated us. So what do we do? We must try to make sure we are living to his glory. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 15, 16 to 21. John chapter 15, I read from verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruits, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. 17. These things I command you, that ye love one another. Verse 18. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. 19. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. Verse 20. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Verse 21. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. I told my brother, it is crystal clear. Amen. He said, ye have not chosen me. Verse 16, I have chosen you. For what? They have chosen you and ordained you that you go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That then that was so ever he asked of the Father in my name, I will give unto you. Meaning, we are living for the purpose of working for God. We have no other life to live that will live for him that called us. I've chosen you and I've ordained you to go and bear fruit for me. And if you go to verse 19, that if you were of the world, if you were of the world, the world would have loved its own. Why are we trying to make the world to love us? Why are we trying to do things for the world to, to for the world? We are living in a way that we are we are balancing it. We are neither of the world or of God. He said, No, you are not of the world. Out of billions have taken you out of the world. You must live opposite the world. Let the world be going that way and you are going that way. Like North Pole and South Pole. You can never, ever, ever be like the world. If you were of the world, the world would have loved its own. But because you are not of the world, but I am choosing you out. So you are living in the world, you are out of the world. We are passing away. We are going away. We are on a journey. If you know this, you will try all means to make sure you avoid the things of this world. But I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hated you. Why is the world loving you? Because you have made yourself part of them. The reason why you are not facing temptations, the reason why wherever you go to celebrate you, everyone are talking good of you, is because you have made yourself part of them. The world can never love a child of God. It's not possible. Any child of God is actually doing the will of God. The world must hate him or her. So therefore, let us do try to make sure we are living for he that has called us. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you go to 20, you say, remember that the word, say, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than the Lord. They persecuted him. They stole him. They never loved him. Why are we trying to make the world to love us? Why are we trying to do things to make, to, to make the world to celebrate us? You are not a celebrity of the world. He that will celebrate you is waiting for you. So don't try to move in the direction of the world. You are never the same with the world. And you can never be the same with them. Except you are not genuinely born again. 
Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, must, we must defend our stand in God. Jesus wants to be the only Master and Lord and must remain that way. Jesus Christ wants to take the preeminence over our lives. He wants to be proud of us. He owns us alone. He died for us alone. He wants us to work for him alone. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, uh, post of peace. Luke chapter 14, 26. Um, sister, um, amen. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Matthew 6, 24, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew 6, verse 24, I read. It said, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. It is clear. Very, very clear. Reason why we are trying to balance it, we are neither here nor there, is because we don't know what we are doing sometimes. If we truly want to obey God, we have nothing to do with the things of this world. He said, No man can serve two masters at the same time. Meaning, you cannot be worldly and be godly. You cannot be pure and be impure. It's either you are impure or you are pure. It's either you are holy or you are holy. It's either you are of the devil or you are of God. God does not need your 93% or 99%. He wants to be 100% your owner. He wants to take preeminent. He wants to take the total control over your life. Praise Master Jesus. No man can serve two masters. Either for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold on to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God more. You cannot serve the God of money, running after how you will buy jet and all these things, and saying you are, you are serving God. How can you hear from God when all you are thinking about is how to buy jet, how to do all those things? You cannot have time for God. It's either you are spiritual or you are fleshly. Choose this day if you will walk opposite the world or you will walk pari passu with the world. And I pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Luke 14, 20 says, If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Amen. This mm. is total preeminence. The Lord is not saying, hate your wife and kill her. No. It's Try to make you understand. I want to be the only. I want to be in control. I die for you. Your wife, it, it means that it's what I tell you, you will do. It's not what your wife is telling you. It's not what, except the, your wife is saying what God is saying. That is the only reason you can do what she's saying. Except your husband, if you not one of the Bible says in Philippians, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, verse 6. He said, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. It's also applicable to husband. Husband, do what your wife is saying in the Lord. Wife, obey your husband in the Lord. Anything short of this is ungodly. It's a sin. So therefore, what do we do? We must do everything possible to make sure we are living for God alone. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, Sister, Sister Otter, you go to Colossians chapter 3, 
Philippians 3, verse 1 to 6, and 7 to 10, Sister, Sister Jennifer Idehe. Colossians 3, 1 to, 1 to 6, Sister Otta, 7 to 10, Jennifer Idehe. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Colossians chapter 3, 7 to 10. Mm-hmm. No, 1 to 6. Okay, 1 to 6. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Colossians 3, 1 to 6. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated, on the right hand of God. Verse 2. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Three, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Four, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye appear, shall ye also appear with him in glory. Verse five, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, Inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, uh, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Six, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Praise Master Jesus. Hold on. Hallelujah. 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 <coughs> Please tell us we should not allow the fantasy of this world and the enticement of this world to encroach us. We must not allow the fantasy, the bling bling things of this world, that they are mirages, they are mirage to entice us. We must take our eyes off them. We must take our eyes off the world. This world is not our own. So let us not try to do things according to the world. We must take our eyes off the world in totality and look above where Jesus Christ is seated. Now, if truly you are born again, if truly you are sure of what you are saying, that all things are passed away and everything is become new, take your eyes away from those things that you are saying you are born again from. The reason why you are saying you are born again is because you are no more of the world. You are no more doing this for the world. That is the meaning of being born again. So if you are actually sincere of yourself, take your eyes away from those things and begin to live for He that you are born again for. If you be risen, if you be risen, see those things which are born. We are Christ seated on the right hand of God in heaven. We must live as though we are already in heaven. Let us practice the life we will live in heaven when the time comes. We are no more of this world. In time past, we were. If you go from verse 7 to 10. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In time past, you were like those in the world, but now you are no more in the world. So, what do you praise the Lord? Hallelujah! So, what do we do? Let us live as though we are now sitting with Christ. Imagine yourself dwelling where Christ is dwelling. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Set your affection on the things above, not on the things on earth anymore. I want to buy the latest car. Those should not be those should not be a problem. I want to have the best house. Should not be a problem. You know why? Because we are going away from them. In no distant time, as the Bible have told us in Job chapter 14, verse 1, that every man born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. All those cows. You are getting the uh, trouble. The other day, I was telling Apostle Peace 
I remember those days when I have one bicycle. I would just go there and take my bicycle. I go away. Now that I have two bicycles, when I get, I'll be confused. Which bicycle will I take now? Should I carry this one or carry the other one? Confusion has come already. <laughs> what about people? Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. What about when I have one car, two cars, three cars? They are more than confused. If bicycle can confuse me, I, I was telling you. Yes, sir. I go to the garage where I park my car, my, my bicycle. I get there. I'll be, which one will I ride now? This bicycle level. What about people who are buying jet and jet? How can they save God? The Bible is saying, if you are wise, take your eyes away from these things. They will not allow you to pray. When you have jet, the first thing you be looking for is have a place you put jet in the airport. A day is millions. You'll be manipulative. Try to manipulate to get more money to make sure you occupy that space. If you fly from Nigeria to, to Germany, if you spend two hours in the airport of Germany, you are going to pay more than 60,000 euro. If too, more, if too small, 12,000 euro in that space. So, are you not coming to preach Christ to the people? You will try to manipulate them to make sure you gain that money you spend in that airport. Not the fear, not the, not the, the pilots that, that, that piloted you. You try to mimic them to make sure you get the money. So how can you pray when you are manipulative? That is why the word of God is canceling you and I today. If we actually want to make heaven, we must take our eyes off these things and look unto heaven. There are chariots over there for you and I waiting for us. The best pilots that you've ever seen are waiting to pilot you when you get there. Let us walk for our Father now. Therefore, sir, therefore we are dead. Dead man, if you read verse 3, therefore ye are dead. Your flesh is dead. A dead man does not drive car. A dead man does not drive plane. Live as though, as if you are dead. Be dead to the flesh. I pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I read from verse 7, Sister uh, Jennifer, are you there? In the head, 7 to 10. Sister Jennifer Idehe. Okay, she isn't there. Um, Apostle Matthew, seven to ten. Colossians three. Seven to ten. Colossians chapter three, verse seven to ten. It says. In the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them, but now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, mal blasphemy, guilty communication out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 7 to 10, I read. It said, In the which you also walked sometimes when you live in them. Verse 8. But now you also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Verse 9. Lie not one to another, saying that you have put all put off the old man, which which is he did. Verse 10. And having put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is well spent out. These are the ones that is mentioned here. You know the life you used to live before. Maybe you were a drug pusher before Christ met you. Maybe you were a prostitute. I don't know the life you were living before. Say, those lives should not be associated with you anymore. Maybe you were a, a 419. You don't need to do it again. 
Whatever life you were living before Christ met you, let that life go. So in that which you also work sometimes, when you live in them, you are no more in them. You are no more part of the government of this world. You are not strange to them. Don't try to make yourself one of them anymore because it's not going to favor you. We have no part in this world anymore. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Say, but now he also put off all things. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Learn no one another. Seeing that you have put off the old man with this deed. Who is that old man? Satan. The world. You have put off the old man. You are no more with him. So do everything to make sure you are no more associated. Don't allow him to see anything that concerns him in your life anymore. Lie no more. Keep malice no more. Envy no more. Backbite no more. Hate no more. All these things are of the world. Let us do everything possible to go out of them. As we have said, we are out of them. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Put on yeah. the new man. Put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created you and I. Let us put on Christ. Jesus is holy. Let us put on holiness. So what do we do? The Bible told us in Proverbs chapter 1 by 10. Say, my son, my daughter, my child, if sinner entice you, if the world entice you, consent thou not. Many things in the world will be calling to your attention. Don't give them attention. Don't pay attention to those things that are calling your attention. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. If you pay attention to them, they will place you in their detention. I come again. Many things of the world are calling to your attention. Don't pay attention to those things calling your attention. If you pay attention to them, they will put you in their detention. Mm -hmm. I pray the Lord grant you wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. They have no Amen. fellowship with our fruitful works. No matter how rich a sinner is, it's unfruitful. No matter how rich a sinner is, you are, you are a waste product. You are wasted. If you die in that sin, everything you ever acquire is waste. Just like my brother said that day, there is no jet that flies into heaven. After you are dead, pack all the things, put it in heavenly jet that fly away. No. Force of gravity to you down. And I pray the Lord will grant us wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. Ephesians 5, verse 11, brother Dennis. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, I will do it very I'm almost uh, right up now. James chapter 4, verse 4. Sister. Um, Amen. I read Ephesians 5, verse 11, in Jesus' name. Amen. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sister, bless you. Mm. You go to James 4, 4. It says, it is instructive. They have told you, have no fellowship. Don't dance with them. Don't eat with them. Don't live with them. Don't live, don't eat, don't dance with the unfruitful works of darkness. Darkness and light cannot occupy the same room. I remember one day my father told me, he said, my son, learn to dance alone. Don't dance with them. When I was coming from Spain, he told me in the plane, 
as you are going now. Be careful of those that think they have gone ahead of you. Be careful of the old prophet. And when I came, I was not careful enough. They almost plastered me to the ground. But glory be to Jesus that I escaped in a narrow way. Many people never escape. That prophet in the Bible never escaped. He died in their hands. So what do we do? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11 is telling an eye. It's canceling us now. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, expose them, run away from them, shun them, reject them, hate them, hate what God hates, and love what God loves. Walk up directly opposite of them. As uh, they are going left, go right. As uh, they are going right, go left. Or you can also walk in a parallel line. They will never meet. As uh, they are there, be here. As far as you people are not together, as far as you are not together with the things of the flesh, I tell you, heaven is sure for you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We we'll take two more, then we go. No, there are other things, but. Time will not permit us. Take two more, then go for questions and then uh, answer. Uh, James chapter 4, verse 4. Um, Sister Osamegwe, there, and somebody else again. Sister Adetun, if you are there. First Corinthians 6, chapter 6, first Corinthians 6 19 to 20. Yes, sir. Uh, we need to take one more. That one is very, very, very imperative. Titus chapter 2, 11 to 15. We'll just, we'll just read through. Sister. Amen. Amen. Sister Grace, if she's there, can, we'll take Titus chapter 2, 11 to 15. We stop there. Who is here? James chapter 4. James chapter 4. James 4, James 4, 4, I read, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Bible verse is talking not just only to the adulterers and adulteress, it's talking to every one of us. Now, the first place in, the, in A, the ye adulterers and adulteress. You know, say ye adulterers and adulteress, you know, no, say, know ye not that the friendship of this world is enmity to God. That one was the, for the adulterers and adulteress. Then, in number four, Whosoever, everybody now. So don't think it's only talking to people who are fornicating, who are committing adultery, who are doing all those things that you just said now. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Don't make yourself an enemy of God. If you want to be a friend of God, you must be an enemy to the world. If world is celebrating you, the Lord is angry of you. And when God is celebrating you, God, any, any, the devil, which is the, of the world, is angry of you. One must celebrate you, and one must be angry. The two cannot be angry at the same time. But choose in these days, may the Lord, uh, may the Lord happy of you. And Satan will forever be angry, and he cannot do anything against you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. I read, sir. God bless you. Amen. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? Verse 20. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, 
glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. Amen. What? What? Can't you see? I make an example of my bicycle just now. I don't need to take any uh, uh, any permission before I get there. I start it. I move away. I go there with my key. I open it. I try it away. This is how Christ wants us to be. That He bought us. Our body is His. Everything that concerns us is His. He bought us with a price. So our heart must be his dwelling place. Our body must showcase him. Let the people see God in you. He told me the other time, some two years ago, say, my son, I want you to be a walking, talking Bible. Let my children in this ministry be a walking, talking Bible. People who don't have time to read the Bible will be reading them. Their lifestyle will become Bible that people are reading. That is how the Lord wants you and I to be. And I pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Your body belongs to Him. Your heart belongs to Him. You know why? He bought you. Therefore, glorify Him with your heart. Don't allow any evil thoughts to settle down in your heart. When it's coming, rebuke it instantly. When the, your heart is telling you hate that person, say, I hate, no, 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 no. He that bought me, say, I should not hate. Think evil on other person. Hey, no, 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 no. I rebuke you, you spirit of hatred. Use of malice, I bind you. Run away from them. Don't allow Satan to advise you. He advise you, is take you to a place where himself we dwell forever. Praise Master Jesus. Uh, Hallelujah. Take the last one, Titus chapter 2, 11 to 15. Titus 2, 11 to 15. Um, sorry, read this. Yes, okay, okay, brother Dennis, God bless you. Sister Grace. Yeah. Sister Grace. Yes, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I read in Jesus' name. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men. 12. Teaching us that denying ungodliness, worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Verse 15, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The reason why the Lord came is to make sure we gain salvation. To make sure we are not living in accordance to the things of the world. Say for the grace that the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men. So do what? Is it continue to be fornicating and say, I know I am? I know the Lord is there, the grace of God is there to always forgive me. The Bible told us that we continue seeing that grace may abound. We should not disgrace the grace of God upon our lives. The grace came to teach us denying ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live so badly, righteously, and godly in this present world. If you cannot live righteously, so badly, godly, holily in this present world, the world will come in heaven, you cannot enter there. Your certificate to enter the next world is by living in this present world soberly, righteously, godly, and holily, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
who himself gave his life to us to redeem us from the things of this world. So what do we do? Let us live opposite the world. Let us do everything to make sure all, all, everything, all the time we are thinking of how to fly away. In no distant time, we always fly away. And all the things of this world, we shall leave them. All these dust beings. That people are cherishing their dust beings. No matter how beautiful they are, they are nothing but fire wound. That the Lord will use to burn the eggs on that day. And I pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Get to 2 Corinthians 14 to 18. When you talk about don't make an equally yoke with them, I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. It's how far we can go. So we have time to for questions and contribution if you have one. Because we are doing Bible study, so we should interact. Amen. 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 If you are there, you are not born again. You are the one the Bible says we should run from. You are the reason why you saying run away now. As far as the world, I run from you. The only reason why I should come to you is to preach to you. That's what I'm doing right now. Without this, I have no business with you. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me, if you want to accept Christ as your Lord and Pastor Savior and to be our personal friend. No matter how rich you are, if you are of the world, I have no business with your money. I'm drinking Gary and heaven shot for me. I'm okay with that. I'm eating your money and your money defy me to send me to hell. I will do that. But if you are born again, you give me one euro, I, ah, I will dance and dance and dance and dance and say, Father, thank you for this money. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, Lord Jesus, I've heard your word. I've seen how you love your children so much. You are telling them to run away from where I belong to now. Father, I want to run away with them. And to do this, I have to denounce and renounce the, the world and everything that belongs to it. Lord Jesus, I have been in the far country of sin for so long. Have mercy upon me. Wash me clean with your heat soap. Purge me with your blood. Take my name away from the book of death, O Lord, and write it in the book of life. I accept you to the Lord Jesus Christ, just as I renounce the devil and all that concern him. Be my Lord and personal Savior, for I am born again. I receive power to go and sin no more. For all things have passed away from now, and all things have become new. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for sending your word my way. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you have amen. This, this, this declaration, I rejoice with you. The Lord Jesus Christ who brought this world your way is rejoicing with you. And the holy angels in heaven are celebrating your salvation. I pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. And most high God, we thank you for what you've done this hour. Thank you. You have taught us, O oh God. Father, through your teaching tonight, your children have decided to leave the world alone. I begin to live opposite the world. Jesus, I say thank you. All I ask, O oh God, is that you hold them by your hands, O oh God. Father, if they hold you in no distant time, their hands will be weakened. Father, I ask, O oh God, you hold them in the end of time in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Those things mm -hmm. to love before. Father, I give them that mind to be to be to hate them. Those things, O oh God, they to celebrate before. Give them the mind to begin to run away from those things, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank you, mm -hmm. Abba Father, because I know this word has strengthened me, has strengthened everyone also, God, to your glory in Jesus' mighty name. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Children of God, we have heard it all. The Lord has spoken unto us again. Crystal clear. I pray as many of us that have heard the word tonight, every one of us will take action and walk according to the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The floor is open for questions and contributions. If you are there, you have any questions that you need further clarification uh, by the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, the man of God is available. You can ask now, but the time is running out. God bless you all. Okay. Amen. 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 So, it's like we all understood everything we were taught tonight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All the uh, open mute. <laughs> if you know you are here with us, I'll meet your mic and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Only, only few people are not with us. Amen. So I believe those that are with us, you is it that it's not clear. It's, it, it's two things. The reason why you're people are is that you you are the food or you don't you don't even know what to ask, you don't understand at all. You will never hear. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So in the next uh, six minutes question. Of contribution, or I ask you a question. <laughs> we're in Bible study, we are not preaching, so we all should be. Don't be an spectator. Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I eat it. Uh, Joshua, what do you understand by what you talk, by what you want to learn today? What what one point do you get today? Okay, she only been omitted. She's not there. Amen. Amen. Um, um Sister Maria Obazele, what? Tell me one point or tell us one point you understood today. What do you what what do you gain? into this um, Bible study. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah, I gained a lot today, but in the book of First John, chapter 2, from about 13 to 14, was to, um, 14 to 17, was talking about we should not love the word, rather the things of the word. Uh, anyone that loves the word, the love of the Father is not in him. And I also uh, learn in John. Can you, John what do you understand by what do you what do you get there? I got that we should not I, we should not love the world, the things of this of this world. Because anybody that loves the thing of this world, the love of the God, love of God is not in him. We should overlook the thing of this world and, and focus our, our 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 mind and everything we have on heaven. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you know that you are a good student, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May God increase in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sister Edith, what do you get today? See, she's talking. Okay, you are talking, we're not hearing you. Okay, it is well. Amen. Amen. Sister Elizabeth Oguigo, tell us what you understand today. What you get today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. I understand that we should not love the things of this world. We should set face turn on holy things, not on this world. And uh, I also think that 
if you are in crime, if you do the thing, the world will not like you, they will hate you. If the world is like we know that a part of them, mm. they will hate you, definitely. God. Amen. Mm. Yes, we should not try to be like the world. That if you are in this world, if you are loving the world, the world will love you too. But if you are in Christ, in truth, and spirit, in spirit and truth, the world will hate you. The reason why they are fighting you day and night is because you are in Christ. So let us not try to make them to love us. Rather, let us do everything to make sure that Christ alone is loving us. God bless you, man. i shown that you are there and you are a good student of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the Lord will strengthen you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, Clara, Anthony, tell us one thing you, you learned today. Uh, Clara, Anthony. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> yeah. I learned about same as our sisters have said it, that we should not love the world or the things that is in the world. That we should set our affections on things above, not things on earth. Amen. And I also learned about John chapter 15, verse 16 to 21, which he said that God has chosen us mm. that we did not choose ourselves. So in that, that we should do the things of God. Mm. I also learned again about the book of First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 to 20, when it talks about that our body is the temple of God. So we should mind the things we do with our body because we are bought with a price. Mm. And we are not of this world that God has bought us with a price. Then therefore we should keep our body holy mm. unto God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are actually with us. And the Lord will strengthen you and power in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll ask a, a question in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 10. It says, My son, my daughter, if sinner entice thee, concern thou not. Who can tell me one of those things that the sinners can use to entice you? The things that the world can easily use to entice you. Sister Indidi, you will give a point. Sister Dukba, you give a point of those things that Satan. Easily you to draw the children of God, those things that is calling your attention to put you in their detention. If you pay attention, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sister Indi Kadube and uh, Sister Antonia. Antonia. I love that. You point out those things to us so that we know how to run from them. Sister Indi, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, like um, when maybe the wealth, the beauty, mm. the way that doing the things there, when we look at it, you would like to ah, maybe I will follow them to do it. But because we are a children of God, when we look at all those things, we should overlook it and know that all those things is something is vanity. Mm. All those things need to be end here. It might be like some people might not have children. Maybe it's the best thing to start envying. The person should not envy. We'll just keep on believing God and know that all those things, one day, one day, we will die and leave all those things here. Mm -hmm. Like some people, there will be um for this, it will begin uh, it will begin envying some people in the world. As a child of God, we should not envy, we should keep on looking unto God and know that all those things end here, that we have a better place in heaven. That's why I say, if it ties you, you should not just try to copy them. Amen. Amen. We know that we have a better place, that all those things is material things. Amen. 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 Well explained. Sister Dukbe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, as a child of God, I understand that we shouldn't be enticed with the things of the world, especially most uh, people that the Lord have chosen to do his work. 
if you are doing the work of God because you don't have that privilege to really do the things of the world and to do some certain things. And as a child of God, it's not all kind of jobs that you can do or it's not everywhere you can go. So you have to be selective. And um, if you are a servant of God and you are because to do the work of God, you are not supposed to be attracted to anything. You are not supposed to lust after the things of this world. You are not supposed to look at yourself and say, oh, I need this, I need that, I cannot get it, and I'm serving God. It's as if nothing is happening because the Lord that I've called you to do his work, the Lord that I've called you into his ministry, he is the only one that can provide for your needs. And as many that have believed in him, God has been doing wonders in their lives. So therefore, we shouldn't be enticed with the things of the world because some people, they can really entice you, make you feel as if you are a child of God. Nothing is going on in your life. Look at you that call on God day and night. We are living better than you. Don't mind them. Focus on God and God will meet you at the point of your need. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord is speaking through us tonight. This is called Bible study. We are all ministers of God in different ways. When this world is advising us, drawn away from them, God give them ear to speak to. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord we supply our needs in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I called somebody yesterday. Um, what was that person? A sister Tony Abbasadeh. Yeah, sister Tony Abbasadeh. Um, um, as a child of God, we don't need to to be um, fancy about fashion because um, some people they, they are in fashion and they pretend that they are serving God. Mm -hmm. They are making up. They are doing everything, but they are still in fashion and they are pretending that they are serving God. And also, we don't need to be money-minded. Mm -hmm. Some people will leave their, they will leave God work and prefer to go and work. When you ask them, why are you not coming to church? They, they say they are working, working even on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I think that we don't need to put our mind on, on money too much because God is the one that supplies our needs. Amen. That's why I think we should not allow the fantasy of this world yes. us. We must take yes. our eyes off them. Praise yes. Master Jesus. Hallelujah. I wish you God that one in Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 4. Praise Master Jesus. God bless you, man. And I pray the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God, we will stop here. I have a contribution, sir. When I told us any contribution, this talk, any question, this talk, now that people have, okay, now, my sister now, my contribution. Okay, right on. Sorry, sir, it just occurred to my heart. Okay, I thanks. also want to contribute in um, Matthew chapter, Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, that talks about, uh, about serving one master. What I say to it, what I say to that is that uh, we should also try to as in like focus all our mind, all our heart to Jesus Christ, as in like when we when most of us as women we married, and we would think okay only what our husband will tell us this is what we will do, and we, and we want to uh, deviate the word of God. We want to like say okay yeah because God said we should obey our husband, so we shouldn't obey what he's not telling us. We should then most of us with the most of us will be obeying our husband and despising what. God said we shouldn't do. So I am also saying in this very aspect that we should try to obey God. We should try to put God first in our marriage. Most of us that our husbands are unbelievers. To Bishpi, for example, in my own case, my husband is an unbeliever and I'm praying that God will bring him to himself. And once my husband is telling me, 
that you are not doing. And I know this is what God wants me to do. And you say, I will not do it. I said, honey, sorry, I will do it because this is what God said I will do. And once I do it, he will not even say anything again. He will say, my Holy Spirit, my Holy Spirit, my Holy Spirit is too much, my Holy Spirit. That's what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say that is, what I'm trying to say here is that we should try to do the will of God. What God said we should do as, as, a, as a virtuous woman in the Lord, as a married woman, women, we should do what God wants us to do, not what our husband wants us to do. And what God said we should do for our husband, we should do for him. And what God said we should do for him as our God, that we should do for him also. That is my contribution. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, with that contribution, now, if your husband now say you should uh, connect or you should not pray, how do you, how do you react? When, when we know that what your husband say you should not do, I mean, what your husband say you should do, God is saying you should not do it. How do you go about this? How, you, how do you handle it? Come again, sir. Now, you know what your husband is saying telling you to do is what God is saying you should not do. Uh, he is your husband. He paid your back price. He married you. So yeah. how, do you know, how do you handle it? Yes. In this very, in this very case, I will, I, will, I will go on my knees. I will pray to God. I will cry to God. I will beg God. And I will tell my daddy, please, speak through my husband. Talk to him. And he has been doing it. I will tell him, talk to my husband. Once I speak to him, let him accept it. For example, like this uh, 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 crusade we want to go to, I was asking myself, I was saying, how will I tell, talk to my husband? Then I, I told my God in my heart, I said, oh God, I want to tell my husband about this. Please let him allow me to go to the place. Immediately, I just said it. He said, no problem. Go to the Holy Ghost. I know it's the Holy Ghost you want to go. No problem. You can go. That's how he answered me. So in this very case, before you want to go to, you want to talk to your husband, you will have to first of all talk to God, beg him, tell him to minister to your husband because he is the only one that can touch the heart of a king. So if you beg your father, he will first of all, he will not touch your, that's your unbelieving husband. So once you approach your husband, on one hand, he will, he will just accept. Amen. So this is how it is in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. The Lord. The Lord, we keep on using you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I read First uh, Peter three, one to two. Likewise, ye wife, be in subjection to your own husbands. That if any obey not the word, they they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Why they behold your chaste. This conversation coupled with fear. As you fear the Lord, you do everything, as I just said, before you go and tell anything, first of all, tell your father, always put God first. And remain humble, say it gently. I know of a woman this morning, the Lord spoke to him of what she should, they, should do for this, they should do for this ministry. And the thing is very, it takes a lot, a lot, a lot. He was afraid. How do I tell this to my husband? Hmm. This one is too much. Am I sure is God talking to me now? He prayed that night. I said, uh, that night I said, Father, hmm, this you are asking me to do now is a big thing. How do I tell my husband about this? The next day or so, as she was going to tell the husband, before she would say, the husband said, I know what you want to tell me. She's online now. The Lord has spoken to me already about it. The same thing the Lord told the, the husband, the Lord told the wife. Why? Right? Because the table is God, if you are the one talking, because this thing is difficult. Please reveal yourself. And the Lord spoke to the husband. There's no, there's no man the Lord cannot penetrate. If you actually want your husband to obey God. First of all, obey God first. Do everything to make sure you are living holy. The Lord will to work on your husband. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this half
Mom, you know that school, this one, like, kind of. Yeah, sorry. Amen. 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 Amen.